Hi, and welcome back to another episode with It's Dr. Dan, and today we're going to be looking at more introductory biochemistry. We're going to be learning how to go from Fisher projections to Hayworth projections. So whenever we have a Fisher projection, the entire idea behind this was to show chirality of a molecule. So whenever we represented uh, different intersections uh, with crosses, this would tell you that, oh, we have a chiral center to the molecule. So for this particular one, I have D-mannose. You can see that there are four chiral centers on this one. But the whole idea about this is to transform it into a three-dimensional structure in a ring projection. So we have to cyclize this. So the whole idea is whenever we do any of these, we have to first start by numbering our carbon chain. So we always give the the highest priority functional group, which is our aldehyde, or aldose in this case. So aldose, because that has an aldehyde on top, and that has the number one, and we'll number all of our carbons. So when we go through this, the first step is that you need to rotate your structure. Now the point of rotating this, so when we're rotating it clockwise 90 degrees, it helps us see where all the different OHs and CHs in this structure are going to be oriented. So the first part of this is that we will have our C double bonded O. Notice how when I started this, I had it pointing to the right at the very beginning and now it's pointing down. I purposely like to do that because it helps remind us that all of the OHs that are pointing down are going to be the bottom of our ring structure and everything else is going to be the top. So we're going to copy everything down. We're going to also renumber it too to help us keep track. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and then number six we will write in. So we will copy over our lowers. So it's H, H, O, H, and then O, H. And then we will put in our last CH2OH. And then it's always the opposite on top. So there's always a hydrogen opposite of every OH. So it's always a quick way to remember you always have a pair of each of them. Now, when we do this, we have to figure out how the reaction is going to occur. So if you remember from my previous video on, on hemiacetals, acetals, and things like that, whenever we go through these structures, the big idea is that the aldehyde or the ketone is going to be reacting with an alcohol. However, if you kind of look at the structure, there are five different alcohols on it. So which one do you pick? Well, let's try to take a look at it. So what if we... So let's try to draw this as a ring structure. And what we'll do is we'll try to illustrate it showing the, let's say the last alcohol reacting and see how that turns out. So when we draw these, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put that C double bond O um, on the right hand side. And what this is gonna do, is gonna turn into an alcohol eventually. So we're gonna then start drawing it as a ring structure. So we'll have the second position, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, the fifth carbon, and then our sixth one going to our CH2OH. Now, when we have the structure here, the, one, the couple of things that we're gonna do, we're gonna draw the bottom of it with a wedge notation. This helps show the three-dimensional shape behind it. Then we're gonna ca capture all of the top and bottom parts of the molecule. So when I say top and bottom, the parts in blue here are going to be bottom. And then the parts in, we'll say yellow are going to be the top. So when we do these, so one thing you're going to see is I have an OH pointing up, an OH pointing up, an OH pointing down, and then an OH pointing down. And why don't we just kind of color code those for ourselves to see which ones were top. And then we had in blue, which ones are pointing down. So it's kind of matching where those were on that ring structure. And we will also number it as well so that we can see what's going on. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if this were to form this way, it's going to cause an exchange of all the different parts, right? So the alcohol group 
turns into an ether, and then the aldehyde turns into a alcohol. So kind of the put it simply whenever we see these, so how, how is the reaction occurring? So if you remember from my previous video, we would always have the following reaction would take place. So the O would react with the C on, and the H on each part. This thing would rotate as a result. And when that happens, we're going to be making a ether as one of our structures as well with an alcohol. So that's going to be part of it. Now, based on this current look here, the way that this would form is that oxygen is going to become a part of the ring. So when this happens, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven members of the ring. Seven member rings are extremely unstable. So it's not going to be this one that's going to be participating. So a quick way to remember for how to know how many parts of a ring they're going to be, it's always going to be either a six member ring for alde typically for aldehydes. So it's not all the time, but probably 99% of examples that you're going to see in biochemistry is going to be six member with an aldehyde. And the other one is a five member ring being that these are the most stable ring structures that we can find in biochemistry. So how can we count it? So there's a quick way to do it. So if we go back to our original structure, the, the alcohol that's gonna react is gonna be your last, you go to your last chiral carbon, and let's make, um, let's make that a little bit smaller. One second. So we go to our last chiral carbon, which is right here. So with that one here, I made it a little too small. We'll go to the last chiral carbon. And what we're going to look at is the alcohol on that carbon. So we look at the last cross. And this is going to be a, the alcohol that's going to be participating in the reaction. So this will be our six member. How do I know it's six? Is it starts at the aldehyde. It goes to the next carbon, third carbon, fourth ca carbon. So this is like our unofficial numbering. We start at the C double bond O, then we work our way down the structure counting one at a time to see how many ring members we have. So it's gonna be six. So let's redraw this structure um, with six. So we'll come down to this, we'll come uh, down to the next page. We'll copy and paste our structure that we drew earlier. So we have it. So we paste that down here. And now what we're going to be doing is creating a six member ring. So we start with our C double bond O, have one, two, three, four, five. And then as we were, I was mentioning before, well, being that this had the CH2OH pointing to the right, what's actually going to be happening here is this entire structure is going to end up rotating. So it's going to rotate around. So when that rotates, it's going to allow for the OH bond to be pointing at that uh, the C the C double bond O. So I'm going to draw that in purple for us. And then when that rotates, depending on your original geometry or original projection of your Fisher projection, the CH2OH can either point up or down. So how do you know where that's going to point? If it was a D projection at the beginning, the CH2OH is up. If it was L, the CH2OH is down. So that's a really important thing to write down for yourself for later. And we'll show that again in the summary. So this is one of our little important little tidbits for ourselves. OK, so that's pointing up. OK, so we'll like kind of highlight that in blue to re represent that step. Now, what's going to happen is the reaction is going to take place that I had before. So this entire ring structure is going to go through a reaction where it's going to we're going to break two bonds and form two bonds. 
as a result. So I'm not filling in any of the groups yet, I'm just showing what the reaction is. And when that occurs, we're gonna have our basic shape, meaning that when this happens, we will have the ether form in the ring, and we're gonna have an alcohol form outside of it. So if you remember, this is our hemi acetal. Now, when that occurs, this allows for two possible rings to form. Either we can have, and that all depends on this carbon right here in red. Now, what this, this carbon has a very specific name. This is the anomeric carbon. And what happens is that there's two types that can exist. It's either gonna form this structure on top or where the OH can point down like that I have here. So both of these are possible, and I didn't mean to erase all that, but that's okay. Now these exist in equilibrium with each other. So we will talk about the two types in a second. So we fill in our CH2OH from earlier. They're both pointing up. We then bold in our line structure just to illustrate that 3D look, because remember this ring is slightly bent, so it's not a flat ring. It does have a three-dimensional shape. Now we're gonna fill in our blue and yellows from before. So if you remember, yellow was pointing up, so we had the first two were, or we had the first two were up, then the third one was down. We'll do the same thing over here, OH up, OH up, OH down. And let's color code that for ourselves. So we have yellow, yellow, and then the blue was down, just to help us see that. So that is our structure. Now let's go back to the anomeric carbon. So anomeric carbons help tell you one more letter. So whether it's beta or if it's alpha. And what that has to do with is the following lines. So if I highlight these in blue again, like so. So if we have it where both lines are pointing together, meaning cis, so the same, then it's referred to as beta, meaning if the CH2OH is up and the OH is up, then it's beta. If they're both pointing down, then it's also beta. With alpha, that's referring to trans. So if we have a CH2OH pointing up and then an OH pointing down, then that would be trans or the opposite of that. So if you have CH2OH pointing down or OH down. So these are up, up, down, down. Oh. Actually, you get that backwards. So. Uh, up, 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 and down, down. Let's separate that for ourselves. This is up, down, and down, up. Okay, so that is how you draw your Hayworth projection for Manos in this case. So if we were gonna name both of these, we could. This one would be Beta D Manos. And that's how you can tell if it's beta. If you're ever giving a name and you need to, and it gives you a beta or alpha, you have to draw the Hayworth projection. And then this would be alpha D manos. So these are anomers of each other. They both exist in equilibrium. So the beta tends to be about 63% in existence and the alpha is 37% in nature. It's a very odd percentage with the two. So I kind of summed up this a little bit, so bear with me for one second of how to draw them. So I put a little guide together. So the first thing you're gonna do is on the how-to guide is you're going to always write the Fisher projection. Then you're gonna determine how many members are in your ring structure. Remember, it's gonna be five or six. So you start on the C double bond OH, and then you're gonna to go to the last chiral OH. So counting along, just like how we did with highlighting, if it was L or D, that's going to tell you where the CH2OH is. So how we can use this guide. So first you want to determine six member is going to be a hexagon. 
five members going to be a house and I made a vi I made, I'm going to make a video doing a five member example. It's going to be a little shorter to show that. So you can see both styles. So that would be a five member ring. Then if it was L, that's going to be pointing down on your ring structure. If it's D, the CH2OH is going to be pointing up on your structure. Now, when you turn everything 90 degrees, like how we did earlier, that's what's going to allow you to show the top and bottom OHs in your structure. It helps you see it a little quicker. Eventually, you'll get you'll know that like the right side of the Fisher projection is down, the left side is up. But I think for most students who are new or, or not planning to be chemists, it doesn't hurt the redraw. It's also good practice for yourself too. Alpha is always trans. So when the so when the CH two OH and alpha or, and the OH are opposite of each other. So the way to think about opposite is if you look at the alpha symbol, notice how it crosses. So it's all about opposite sides. Um, so beta is the same. The way to remember that is that the B, the, like the loops of the B are on the same side. It kind of helps. So you'll see that the CH2OH and the OH are the same on both of these structures. Okay. So the easiest way to do these, if you remember both of the shapes, so six and five, all biochemical structures in a ring projection are going to be these ones, unless you have a teacher trying to assign really crazy projections. But most of the time, you're going to see one of these. So if you can remember those two shapes, you don't have to know the mechanism behind the reaction. You can just copy down that shape and then connect them if you have to do a disaccharide or polysaccharide. But this is how to do a Aldos Hayworth projection from a Fisher. I hope this video helped. And I hope to see you next time for future introductory organic and biochemistry videos. See you next time. This is Dr. Dan, and please hit that like and subscribe button to help support the channel. All right, I'll see you all next time. Bye.